Hey y'all, it's your homegirl Ronika. Welcome back to the Please Do Tell podcast. We have another story time for you. So we even have snacks this time because that means <laughs> <laughs> because my guest today even encouraged me like, oh, do we have snacks? That was a great idea. So now I think we're going to incorporate snacks into the story time. Thank nice, you, Corey. Nice. Um, but before I throw it over to Corey, um, I just want to thank you all for listening, for responding, your feedback from last week's, uh, last two weeks, because we do this bi-weekly, uh, the last episode. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so don't forget to like, share, subscribe on wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find Please Do Tell Podcasts. And we're also on YouTube. So don't forget to do that, okay? So now we're going to bring it over to Corey. But, oh, Corey, you know I ain't even go through it to you yet because <laughs> Corey brought me a gag. Now, if you're new here, which you should be my homie by now, because, you know, after the first time I say homie, we're homies. But Corey brought me a gift. So you all know that I paint my nails every, I paint my nails every week, a different color. So <laughs> Corey brought me a candle, because I love candles. I'm always going home. Wait, here we go. Relax, see? Relax. And then... Wait for it. No. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Corey and I worked together for some years, and I think I was even doing my nails at work. Nah. Okay. See? Was. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my nails at work. So, um, uh, before people got there, of course. Hello. So, Corey, thank you. So, this is just, he's putting y'all on notice. He's already suggested snacks. And he's bringing gifts, so catch up. Corey, I'm so happy to have you today. So, Corey, I'm going to throw it over to Corey to introduce himself um, really quickly, and then we're going to go right into um, probably numerous story times. But, Corey, yeah. tell us about yourself. So, I'm a former Ben Harbor graduate. I graduated uh, 2007, uh, <clears throat> was an athlete, varsity athlete, two-year varsity athlete for basketball, Participated in a lot of extracurricular activities. I was in band, percussionist. Um, I did soccer. I ran cross country. Um, didn't do key club, unfortunately, right? Oh, man, didn't key, key club, club was lit. Right. Um, but then after that, like, you know, I went on to play basketball, you know, um, at the college level. Learned a lot of things about myself throughout that journey. Um, but after that, you know, just came home. Thought I had my life figured out what I wanted to do. <laughs> Same. And then, like, everything just kind of shaped to where I am today, mm. you know. So that's This story time going to be good. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> so um, we were just talking a little bit before talking to y'all. Is um, There's always a conversation, especially in our hometown, about student athletes. So I want to know what that journey was even like for – Corey to even become a student athlete because he just said that he went to college and played collegiate ball. So, because there's going to be, even at the beginning of this, at the end of this, wherever, because this whole thing for this month is like, why school? So, was your reason for going to college just to be an athlete? Or what was what was your thoughts beyond that? Like, how did you even work to become a student athlete? Because you do know that's a job in itself. Yeah, so... I learned on my journey. Mm. Um, I didn't even really know what a student athlete was until I got to college. Um, I knew a little bit about it from high school, um, playing under Coach Nichols. So, you know, if we got in trouble or anything like that, we wouldn't be able to play or sit mm. out practices and things like that. So that was the first real time I've seen, like, you know, character matters, um, you know, grades matters and things like that. But I didn't know how serious it was, mm. right? <clears throat> And I'll bring that back around later to just a, some of the things that I've experienced, you know, being an oh, adult and yes. seeing it with the, with the kids nowadays. Mm -hmm. But um, my first student, when I knew it was serious, was when um, I went to school with a couple guys, right? 
And after the year was over, we're trying to transfer schools, right? Like first situation didn't work out the first year. So we're like, all right, we're going to transfer. So my buddy like, hey, where you going? I said, I'm trying to transfer here. Where you, where you trying to go? He said, you know, I'm, I'm looking into other schools too. Wait, well, so this is from a community college to a university? Of no, no, no. Uh, Juco to Juco. So from oh, community college to okay. community college, yeah, right? Okay, so okay. my first year, I played at Glen Oaks Community College in Centerville, uh, Michigan. So it was out there by like uh, Sturgis, like Three Rivers. Like just, oh, my. So, yes. it's, so it's Amish people, right? Okay. This is my first time ever seeing Amish people, right? <laughs> so like the crazy thing. And this is where the story just shapes <laughs> itself, right? So the so the crazy thing is like, um, I didn't have a car my first year. None of us had a car. We stayed in Three Rivers, uh, in apartments. So once again, we we had to come out of pocket for this, right? For mm. for the apartment, like it wasn't dorms at community colleges back then. Well, at least the one I attended. Um, the school was probably like 20, 30 minutes away from where we stayed and we didn't have a vehicle right oh my god <laughs> so look, this so look. is getting good already <laughs> so, so look so it was only like three people on the basketball team that had a vehicle now you got anybody who knows we got like 15 or 17 mm -hmm. people on the team so how is all of these people gonna get to school right it like it was so jacked up <laughs> right so my roommate he was from uh, Chicago. His name Charles Harris. Shout out, shout out, Chuck, man. Uh, that's Chuck. that's that's my guy right there. But uh, he and he only ended up staying a semester. Once again, he from Chicago. He from the city. Mm -hmm. Come here, you like what is what? this? Horses on the road. Every everything jacked up, right? You know, like everything jacked up. So peep, peep oh. this, right? It's so jacked up. I can't even get mad at my roommate. How I'm gonna get to school? <laughs> like, you know, it, I'm thinking about stuff I like that. Like, yo, that. I can't get to school yeah. in my room. Like, shut up. Like, yeah. stuff like that. I, I gotta shut up. You know, what I'm saying? like it was just, it was just that jack. It was just that jacked up, right? Yeah. So, Chuck left for, uh, after the first semester. Okay. One rag on. <laughs> now the other two cats who had vehicles, they was white guys. Okay. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't really. It was, you know, we did our thing, but everybody don't talk to everybody on the team. So a oh, person who okay. I don't normally talk to, now I have to, hey, buddy, <laughs> you know, how you doing? <laughs> Friends. Yeah, you know, like, do some stuff like that, right? Okay. So, uh, but they was, they was cool. And I'm going to tell you this story, man, before I get back to me and my guy when we transferred from that college. It was wintertime. One guy had a pickup truck. Hmm. Huh. Not the four door kind, the two door kind. Mm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a two door, it's only three seats. It's three, yeah. It's yeah. three seats. Mm, yeah. Tell me why we was riding on the back in the winter time in the snow. Like we had to lay down to get like cause the wind and the snow and stuff. <laughs> like, so we literally bundled up. Look, I'm I'm laying. I'm like <laughs> The whole the, for 20, 25 minutes. Oh my gosh. I'm like this. Like, yo, this is crazy. I'm like, this is crazy, right? Like, this can't be school, bro. Like, what I got myself what I got myself into. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was so wild. And then to make to make things even more crazier, right? <laughs> At the end of the year, right, when we found out like we leaving and stuff like that. So me and my homies, like we just started walking around the area that we lived at, you know, once again, ain't no social media, ain't nothing. Like you gotta go do things. So like we used to just go out and walk around and try to see what things are. We walking one day, we probably like <laughs> five, 10 minutes <laughs> into our walk. I'm like, hey man, I'm like that car look familiar or that truck look familiar. He like, man, you sure right. Tell me why it was our coach car he stayed like <laughs> five minutes from us, bro. Right? Like, never said, hey, any of y'all need a ride? Like, nothing. Like, we didn't get no food stamps. Like, we didn't get we didn't get anything, right? Like, so we struggling our first year. Like, our first year, we struggling, bro. Like, we literally struggling. But, so school, right? So school. We missed so many classes because we could we couldn't, couldn't get, get a there. ride to school right yeah. so it's winter time we wake up we look like yeah it's gonna be a good day like we just go lay back down play the video games and stuff like that so that led to us missing 
like classes and, and, and grades slipping and things like that. But you also take like a lot of prereqs. Mm -hmm. You know, for, well, you know, from what what I did, took a lot of prereqs uh, my first year. So I'm in class with sixty year olds doing two plus two math. Right. I said, no, they're struggling. Right. We doing basic division. <laughs> right. Struggling. Like basic multiplication. I'm like, yeah. dog, nah, like. Y'all for real? Like, yeah. I mean, this class, dog? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. it was crazy, right? Yes. Not to laugh. We, we want to celebrate those that are going back to school in for older sure. age. But you, yeah, that, okay, continue. Cause, and this is before Uber. We want to <laughs> just say this is before Uber. Nah, okay. nah. But um, I always took school seriously mm -hmm. um, because that's just who I was as a kid, right? Yeah. Like, that's just how I was raised. Like, my brother. Um, I always say he's the smartest person I know. I always tell him that, but he's too smart for his own good, right? Mm -hmm. Like one of them, right? I yeah. can't tell him that, right? Yeah. But um, like his friend, I always say I wish, I wish I had what he had. Mm -hmm. I knew that <clears throat> if I apply myself, of course, right? But mm -hmm. some people are just gifted, mm -hmm. and I felt like my brother was just gifted. So I look at things like, man, this dude can fix anything on a car. Mm -hmm. He could do anything electronic. You know what I'm saying? Like you tell him something like a wizard with it. Me, I gotta go. You know, I, I'm like that I'm, is true. You know, I'm, I'm really like that. So, mm -hmm. um, but you know, in my household though, you know, it was like Corey don't bring home bad grades. It was never, um, you can do like the bar, right? Like the bar was don't bring home bad grades. So guess what I did? Didn't bring home bad grades. Okay, I didn't. Oh, I need the CDs, B's, A's, honors. Uh, you know, things like that. It wasn't yeah. that. So if I can get a C, I'm getting a C. Mm -hmm. To me, a C was cool. It was passing. So I never really applied myself. Wow. So just um, school was always important to me because I couldn't bring home bad grades. So I knew that I had to at least have good standing grades. You know what I'm saying? So um, when we were in college, like I said, I, I, I missed a uh, few classes, but I, I prepared. I knew what was going to happen because I knew the situation I was in. So I was always ahead. So when things did start slipping, I contacted my professors, let them know my situation. Yeah. Hey, I'm ahead. Woo -woo. So if something dropped, let me know. I mean, I'll let you know. But I don't know if my other people did that. So when it's time to transfer, they don't have what I have credits yeah things like that so then that's that's when you really figure out like oh i'm in some stuff and what they don't tell you is so and and and, and basketball everything is about conference play that's where you really go crazy like preseason is preseason but don't nobody care you win conference championships it's the regionals the <clears throat> all of those yeah that that's the like the playoffs but, okay but it's the teams you play in the conference. Oh, okay. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. what you mean. Okay. Yeah, yes. So, okay, yeah, got it. It's, it's, the con it's the teams you play in the conference. So that lets okay. you know your seed. And like, if you win, mm -hmm. you win conference. So you get like rings and banners and stuff like that. So conference play is really where it's at. So um, that's second semester. Okay. So yeah. why, why would you become an eligible first semester knowing conference play is the most important thing second semester? Don't nobody care about preseason like that it's cool like you know you play a couple teams in there but like it's preseason right. yeah okay <laughs> you know yeah so that was one that was my thought process was like I'm not missing conference so first semester I got to do what I got to do to make sure that I'm gonna play conference basketball because I knew that's what a, that's where you make your name at in, in conference play so imagine the people that uh don't do what they're supposed to do academically during conference play now what happens is next semester you miss preseason and you may even miss conference play next season because you're behind so much. You got to make up what you missed on top of taking uh, like another courses. Right. So I'm like, if y'all understood just how detrimental it is to, you know what I'm saying? Um, not do what you're supposed to do. You wouldn't do it again. And I actually um, talked to one of my former club kids, you know. He had a great conference play, mm. was set to go to a school, <clears throat> scholarship and everything. I followed up with him like, hey, what's going on? I heard you're supposed to go here. I'm, I'm not hearing anything, seeing anything. He said, man, he said, Mr. Corey, I messed up. 
<sighs> dude, dude, tanked. Grades. Yeah. yeah. Tank. Yeah. It took it took him probably two years. He ended up going to another school, right? Yeah. That's two years. So you gotta think if you 20 years old, now you 22, about to be a junior in college because you transferring. You know, that's that's time you wasting. You want to get in and get after it. You know, that's still good age, but still you want to you want to get in and get after it at an early age. Yeah. But <clears throat> I don't think kids understand that you have to prepare yourself for the worst. So even when I was taking classes, for an example, if I have to stay eligible, nine credits, right? Just eligible, nine credits. I say, and you know, in college, you so certain courses would be two credits, some yes, would be three, three, some would be whatever, four, right? Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It depends on your classes, right? But if I know I got nine credits to stay eligible, and let's say that's four classes or something, right? Yeah. Guess how many I'm taking? 15. As a student athlete, I'm taking 15 credits. Why? I need a cushion. Mm. If I drop one of these classes, okay, you know, if something happens where I may fail one of these classes, I'm still good. Mm-hmm. I know I got nine. Well, I know I got twelve extra. Of course. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Extra six to play with. Yeah, I got an extra six credits to play with. That, yeah. that was my philosophy. So I always thought ahead, like I gotta take these extras just in case, because I wasn't the smartest. I knew I was gonna drop a class. Let me tell you about my first uh. My first school at Glen Oaks, right? I'm gonna tell you, they did me so dirty. They did me so dirty. So I take a, uh, I take a Spanish class, right? Spanish class, right? I did so bad in the Spanish I know. class. Look, I did so. But she was a terrible teacher. Okay. She, 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 she was. She was. She was a terrible teacher, man. I'm like, she was horrible. She was one of the ones like I tell you one time and that's it. Oh, okay. Don't ask me yeah, no questions. Yeah. You're supposed to know this stuff, she right? She was like a math teacher. We know. Okay. Man, listen. So you know how they had like marking periods in like high school and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so i guess it was like Hmm? we're in the second half of the the course right we're in the second half of the course she came to me one day she said Corey. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) she said i think it's best you drop this class she said there's no way you're gonna pass my pride kicked in though like how you gonna tell how you gonna tell me i gotta drop the course i'm gonna take my f with flying colors or something (laughs) like that like I'm going to go out trying it. Like, at least I'm going to get a D or something like that, right? Like, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to go through it. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I dropped the class, right? You know? Like, that was one of them things I had to suck it up. But it was one of the things that I knew, once again. If, 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 that, if that class was one of the classes that I needed to play, <laughs> I'm dead meat. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so then um, I ended up transferring to Kellogg Community College. Yes, right? Okay. Um. That's in Battle Creek. It's better this time. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a vehicle this time, right? You know, yeah. I got food stamps this time, right? Like, yeah. I'm learning. That's important. I'm learning everything, right? So even another portion to it is, like, networking. Like, sometimes you're there by yourself. I was fortunate enough that everywhere I went, I knew people. You know what I'm saying? Like, people from Ben Harbor, right? Uh, Mike Travier, shout out to Mike Travier. Uh. Uh, <laughs> He was you one know, of the, I'd be messing with Mike. <laughs> he was one of the first people I seen in Battle Creek. Mm. I'm like, you in Battle Creek? Like, that's random. Like, you know, yeah. he, like, why are you here, bro? Like, I'm here for sports. Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> Not like, you know. Yeah. I think he was playing soccer at the time. I don't know, right? Soccer scholarship, <laughs> anything at the time, right? <laughs> but we from Ben Harbor. We ran cross country together, right? Yeah. So like we instantly, oh, man, I got a I got a guy here. He stayed right across the street. So <laughs> if I didn't want to go anywhere, I can go to his spot. And chill till, you know what I'm saying, study hall, practice, things like that. Um, but then I also got connected with my, who's now my god brother. We stayed together, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I had people all around. So when I got there, I started networking. Like, all right, show me show me the area. Mm-hmm. Show me who's mm-hmm. who. Like, I connected with the coach. Like, you know, things like that. Because you never know what you may need while your parents are away. Yes, I'm. Yes, I was like an hour and twenty some minutes away, but my I wasn't trying to go home. I can always go home. Like mm-hmm. home gonna always be here. Mm-hmm. So for mm. me, can you say that one more time? Yeah, home home gonna always be here. Home gonna always be home. Like when you out, <laughs> get entrenched, immerse yourself in mm-hmm. like the culture, whatever it is, and uh, try to learn who you are. You know, you can always come back home. So Thank I'm a, I'm, I'm a firm believer in like only come if you have to. 
you know, ain't nothing wrong with visiting, but I got to go. You know, okay. I got something that I'm trying to reach. But um, just getting back, so mm-hmm. I was I was learning how to network. Like, people, we going places, we doing things, face value. So now if I'm ever in a jam, I, I know buddy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the teachers. Like, you know, like, hey, is it anything extra I could do? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really out here, like... Letting them know that I'm serious about where I'm at. Yeah. Now, did I ever think I was going to graduate college? No. <laughs> like, that wasn't on my radar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just doing something at the time. Um. But just going back to that whole experience, I'm glad that I was able to uh, do those things and accomplish those things and um, be myself during the process. You know, I learned a lot of things through trial and error. Like I Mm -hmm. say, right, uh, my first year I didn't get food stamps, so how did I eat, right? Yeah. I'm eating uh, pizza rolls, right? Like, kids make jokes about it now. Like, no, I really, really wasn't eating anything. Mm. Like, noodles, pizza roll, chips, cakes. They didn't even have a Walmart where I was at. My, no, said, in no, Three Rivers, they yeah. got one now. Yeah. They got one now. Yeah. When I didn't, the only thing they had was a, a, a Peebles. I had a Peebles. And, uh, they had a Walmart right on the corner. I don't even know what Peebles is. It's like a little clothing store. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But okay. I don't, that has nothing to do with Walmart. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they had uh, they had uh, Walgreens. Mm. Walgreens right on the corner. So I'm eating. Whatever that whatever, Walgreens. Whatever the Walgreens got. Right? Yeah. So I'm finding out. So I had a guy. He was a sophomore on the team. His name was Kendall Harvey. He, uh, he was from like the nap, right? He was like, y'all ain't got no stamps? I'm like, you like stamps? What mm-hmm. are you talking about? like, dog, I'm getting like 200 a month. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm like, man, BS. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, for real. He said, Coach Pro ain't put y'all on. That was our coach at the time. He said, Coach Pro ain't put y'all on? I'm hot. <laughs> um. This whole time I'm eating pizza rolls, nothing, and I could mm. be getting two hundred. Hey, Chuck, yeah. you know my yeah. guy Charles. Hey, yeah. man, come on, man, we got some money to go like do something, bro. Like, let's go do something, right? It made it made us stronger, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it made us stronger. And I always say we did this pre-social media era. You feel know? like pre-social media era is the best times of my life. <clears throat> but um, you know, I end up getting my associates at KCC in arts. I wasn't going for a degree. That's what I'm saying. So when they told me, like, hey, you have an associate, I'm like, huh? I ain't even walked the field. I I just I just got my degree in the mail yesterday. I called earlier this week, right? Now, I've been, they always used to give me a hassle, right? I didn't try to go back and get my um degree until after I got my bachelor's, mm-hmm. right? So I say probably like 2016, 17, when I started inquiring about like, hey, I'm trying to get my degree from, you know, I went here, I graduated, right? Yeah. They always gave me the runaround. So I'm like, man, I, I probably got to pop up on them. Like, you know, I never went, right? So something was like, man, follow up again, follow mm-hmm. up again, follow up again. So I finally followed up like, yo, I'm trying to get my degree. I did this, this, this. They finally found me in a system and then we got the process started. So my degree, my associates just came yesterday because i didn't even know you <laughs> finished there so that's it's what like, i'm saying right? uh congrats it, uh, it has the right date on there yeah right? okay, yep. uh, okay. It, it, ha- it, ha- it has the right date <clears throat> and once again sports was the reason why i even have that associates mm. because when i was trying after i finished playing at kcc now it's time to figure out where i'm going to go next a university a four year so i didn't have i only had one recruit after my second year it was in ashland university in ohio and they lost their whole coaching staff so i'm a very easy to please sheesh i was a very easy to please guy i said i'm going wherever you want me Mm -hmm. like i didn't have a lot of options so i had to work for everything like i've never even played aau basketball in high school right like it wasn't a big circuit like it is now Mm -hmm. but i remember um my going into my senior years when i really got better Right, and I know I'm better, right? So I'm like, I want to play AAU basketball to see how good I am against other competitions. So I go to my mom. I said, Mom, I want to. Um, they got this thing called Kazoo Blues, which is in Kalamazoo. I want to play, try to play for them. First thing she say is, We ain't got no money for that. Mm. 
when I hear that, it's over with for me. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like, well, there go my AAU chances, right? So, like, kids now, they, they have a whole AAU circuit where they get exposure out of high school. I did it. So, it was harder for me to get in school because I didn't, nobody knew who I was, mm -hmm. right? So, mm. um, that's why it was, that's why when I got into my first school, I got there on my own. No coach helped me get into my school. I went and worked out. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. hey, yo, this is whatever you need. I can get film. I can come to open gyms. I can, whatever, like, whatever, right? You were hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now peep this, man. I'm telling my life story, right? I was the first player, person committed to Glen Oaks Community College from Ben Harbor. That, that, from the, it was two other guys that came with me, right? I was the first player committed. So they like, yo, Nils, where you going? Mm -hmm. I tell them where I'm going. They're like, hey, can you set up something? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, yeah. So I reached out to the guy because I actually met him on a black college tour. He was an assistant coach, right? He was driving uh, buses. <clears throat> so we was on a black college tour. He had a, he had a uh, Glen Oaks jacket on. And I only heard Glen Oaks one time from John Hunt. They call him Fats, right? So mm -hmm. me and Fats used to work out in the summer. And he was like, yeah, I, used, I went to Glen Oaks before I transferred here, you know, Eastern Washington, things like that. So when I seen the Glen Oaks jacket, I'm like, hey, I heard it at school. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know somebody named John? He like, fatty? See, fast? using those connections. Yeah, he, yeah, like, yeah. he yeah. like, yeah, I know fast, right? So that's how we connected, mm -hmm. right? And the, and the guy, we still connected to this day. I call him my goddad now, right? We still connected to this day. But uh, he was like, hey, I'm going to set you up with a workout. So he contacted Coach Pro. That was the head coach, workout, whatever. But Coach Jay was uh, coming to Benton Harbor working me out before I went to Glen Oak. So he telling me like, you know, you got to run, you got to do all these things. So I commit. I don't do my due diligence. I don't know no better. My brother never played sports for a, a school. Mm. My dad didn't play sports for a school. My mom don't really care about sports. The only person that played sports was willy nilly, but we, we wasn't really? close like that. Like we didn't hang out like that. Like we only, everybody in my family only got together at grandma's house. Mm. But outside of that, like, and you gotta think I was way younger than him at the time, you know. These like, are all people I went to school with. So <laughs> Corey talking about he way younger. You ain't that much younger. I'm probably like an elementary at the time. Okay, Y'all in high right. school. You're right. You know, like we ain't got, <laughs> you're right. We ain't got nothing to hang out about at you're this right. point, right? I'm a you're kid. Right. But um, yeah, nobody in my family plays sports. So I'm going and learning everything on my own. I never had nobody to be like, I got you, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Until I met the guy. But he only had so much, right? But anyway, so um, I go to Glen Oaks. I bring my family with me. We meet the coach. Coach say, yeah, I like your game. We're going to get you here, da, da 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 So I trust the coach. I trust, you know, the guy at the time um, who I connected with to take care of everything, right? So I'm all set. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to Glen Oaks. Right? Where else I'm going to go, right? <laughs> yeah. And we had 28 minutes. All right. <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so after i you know I, my guys they like i tell them where i'm going one guy like hey man can you give me a look get him a look right come on man i got you right that's just who i am so he ended up coaching up liking him he ended up coming to glen oaks too so it was three of us that ended up going to glen oaks right this is the crazy part this is the kicker i find out second semester Second semester that I wasn't even on a scholarship, a basketball scholarship. I didn't even get a scholarship, right? So the whole time, I'm, I'm trusting like everything's taken care of. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy, right? Now, Pete, now Pete man, this story gets murky, man. <laughs> Remember I told you people left, right? Yes, right? yeah. We started the season with 17 people. Second semester. From second semester till we finished the season, we had like eight. Like eight people, right? So you mean to tell me you ain't got no scholarship money? So I was able to suck up my pride and say, okay, I didn't get scholarship money first semester, but I know you got scholarship money. Now, now yeah. They gone, and yeah, I know they was on yeah. scholarship, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still didn't give me no scholarship, right? He said, he said I can do you one better. Well, he ain't say one better. He said, I, he said, I can do you this. He said, I can get you work study. I don't want work study. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want a scholarship, dog. Like, 
But it was a lose lose. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm gonna take the money. Okay. So I took the money. I took work study and. From when he didn't give me a scholarship, I knew I wasn't coming back. Mm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he knew he didn't want me back anyway because our team was terrible. Right? We actually was good, but we was terrible. Right? <laughs> now, peep this, right? The honesty. L let's, add, let's add insult to injury. Let's add insult to injury. Okay. So my guy from Ben Harbor who, who came with me, I found out that Coach Pro gave him a scholarship. Now, now, hold on. <laughs> hold on. The guy who came because I told him about the school, you give him a scholarship? Yeah. And I wasn't even on one? And I was arguably your best player statistically. Statistically, I was, I was arguably the best player, right? Like, like, he was the best athlete. Don't get me wrong. Like, he was our leading scorer, best athlete. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Larry Bell. That's, that's my guy. Uh, we graduated together in 2007. And I was like, why do I know that name? Yeah, okay. you do. You do. Okay. You do. You do. Okay. So we went to Glen Oaks together. He was he was okay. the best athlete. Uh, he was our number one scorer, but I was right behind him as a, you know, number two scorer. But yeah. everywhere I went, oh I'm like God. top three in free throw percentage, three-point percentage, field goal percentage, <clears throat> things like that. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Yeah. So my homeboy, Larry... He was a tyrant at Glen Oaks, right? He was, he was a tyrant, dog. Like, and he really, like, he was the reason why Coach Pro didn't want none of us back. Because we all stick together, right? Yeah. So, like, when Larry was doing stuff, we was like, man, like, he from Ben Harbor. We from Ben Harbor. Like, we gonna stick together. Like, it was just, it got that bad. Like, he would talk crazy to the coach. Man, let, let me stop, right? Like, yeah. We ain't gonna go that deep, right? Okay. Like, <laughs> we ain't gonna say, yeah, gonna say like, nothing like that, man. He would, he would, he would go. That's, that's what's up off, off wax, man. Okay, you know. okay. I'll but break. um <laughs> yeah so uh that's how we ended up that's how i ended up going to kcc i was okay. like but i already planned this so when he when i got work study i started looking at other schools immediately i said where can i go so it's conference play right second semester it's conference play so i'm sizing up other schools location players that they have their style of play coach i'm, I'm sizing up everything so we play uh Kellogg Community College at Kellogg. And I'm doing my thing. You know, Larry doing his thing. We doing our thing. We end up losing the game. But when I say they throwing alley-oops from half court, I'm like, I ain't never seen this, dog. Like, the, 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 the point guard at the time was just crazy with the rock. I'm like, yo, like the way that they were playing, I'm like, I can get with this, dog. So I reached out to the coach right after that game. Yeah. I'm coming. I said, I'm coming. I said, I don't care. I want to play. Uh, like, I can fit right in with the system. You know, so that's that's how I got there. Now, you know, things happen on that end um, from a basketball standpoint because I was a transfer. So, like, oh, when, you, okay. when you transfer in, a lot of cats be intimidated, things like that. You know, you taking my shine and stuff like that. So, me and a few guys, we bumped heads um, when I came. You know, just the athlete portion. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. The, just, just me and the athlete. My mm -hmm. story, you know, just me and an athlete, right? But um, after that whole thing wrapped up, this is when I go to West Virginia. <clears throat> so I'm already getting a feel for, I know what it takes to be a student athlete at this point, you know? So when I get to West Virginia, everything is a breeze. But this is around the time where I start getting more serious about what am I going to school for? Mm -hmm. I already knew that I needed a plan B, right? Okay. So, you know, it, it, there's two, two ways people can look at it. Don't have a plan B, because if you have a plan B, that means you're not putting it all into your plan A, right? Mm -hmm. Then you got the people like me who say, hey, man, if everybody had a plan A, what, what would the world look like? Everybody don't win. That's the reality of the situation. Somebody has to have a plan B, right? So that's me. I'm always have a plan B. Right? That don't mean don't work your plan A, but you gotta have something just in case. So let's go back. If I didn't have 15 credits and I only took those nine to stay eligible or whatever, and then, and then that Spanish class dropped, I messed up. Mm. Right? I didn't have a plan B for that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, it, was, it was a breeze. Once again, I get into another sticky situation. So, it's crazy how I got there, right? When, so uh, just to go back, I said I had one offer 
<clears throat> in Ohio when I was leaving uh, Kellogg. It was called Ashland University. They lost, they lose their whole coaching staff. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Basketball, you know, that got me in college, you know. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm like, I started reaching out to coaches. You know, I reached out to Grand Valley. Um, I reached out to a coach in Central Missouri. You know, a couple connections. A couple people was trying to connect me and stuff like that. Like, it, it just wasn't falling through. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm going to take a year off and just get my degree. That's how I got my degree. I took a year off and just was academically and got my degree. So now when I transfer in, I don't have to worry about anything, right? You know, okay. the credits. No, I got the degree. I got the paper. So I'm right. good. <clears throat> but so the following year, I'm the cameraman for... KCC, the school I played for. I'm the cameraman. Like, you know, I'm still around the team and stuff like that, right? I'm the cameraman. Like, and the crazy thing about it is when you're the cameraman, you forget that you're the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, man, like, a, cu- a couple people had beef with me. Not no real beef. <laughs> <laughs> Not no real beef, man. Yeah. But, like, I was saying things on camera. I was like, mm. and they kind of took it the wrong way. But, <laughs> But that was me being that what? was me that was me being a competitor. Okay. Right? That was me like, hey man, don't shoot that dumb shit. I knew it. You know, like stuff like I that. Knew like, it. Hey man, yeah. quit, quit crying and get back on defense. Yeah, like yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was, You were it was, a fan running a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know at the time, right? So they running the taste back. I'm like, God. <laughs> Hey, You're and, loud and clear. Yeah, man. I'm like, you know, so I, I had to mend some of those relationships, man. Like, yo, you you good, man. You good. Like it wasn't nothing like that. But um, so the so the whole time, like I'm I'm the cameraman, <laughs> and they play my old school. I'm learning so much. Go ahead. My old school win conference that year. That Glen was, Oaks. It was cold. Really? And it was cold. They won, I'm just they won, throwing their names around. They won <laughs> conference that year, right? <laughs> okay. So my my cousin, he's not my blood cousin, but I call him cousin because he's like real close to my actual blood cousin. Yeah. Um, he played for Glen Oaks. He you know went to St. Joe, graduated from St. Joe. He played for Glen Oaks. They stump a mud hole in KCC, right? So, after the season, I hit up, his name BG. I hit up BG, um, my cousin. I hit up BG. I say, hey, man, you going anywhere? <laughs> He's like, man, I ain't really got nowhere to go. But he said, my homie's got an offer in West Virginia. I said, I said, who, ah, I said, who going? Okay. He, he tell me who going. I start, I start doing this. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is six of y'all going? I ain't never heard, look, I ain't never yeah. heard this ever in my life. Yeah. Six people from the same school going to the same school. I said, yeah. nah, man. I said, they gotta yeah. be terrible. Like, yeah. I mean, they gotta be terrible. <laughs> like, let me look into this school, bro. Right? Like, yeah. I'm like, nah, that don't make no sense, right? So, <clears throat> it was my homie. We all ended up playing together, right? So, we all in a group chat to this day. We talk, like, every day, every other day, stuff like that, right? It just make sure I got the number right. It's, it was Aaron Fluellen. He was from Cincinnati. Javon, we call him J-Man. He's from Lansing. Zach, we call him Killer. He in Ann Arbor. Uh, Jelly, his name Durante, we call him Jelly. He's from Dayton. Are they okay with you giving out? Things? I know, right? That's what I'm saying, right? Let's go ahead, man. My, he's, my, he's my guys. I got to shout my guys out, man. I gotta, they, okay. We all in good standards. You feel what I'm saying? We all, okay. We all in good standards, man. Hey, guys. And my, my other guy, BG, obviously, who I said, uh, I may be missing one more, or that may be it. That may be, I might have been a 6'1". That was a lot. I might oh, like six men. Yeah, I might, I like I might, I might have been a 6'1", right? So okay. I said, no, nah, this can't be true. I said, this can't be true, right? So I reached out to the coach. I said, hey, uh, mm-hmm. I said, I know you don't know me, but I play for KCC. I used to play for Glen Oaks. I have nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I want to come down and, uh, you know, okay. take a look at me, right? <laughs> so he had told me, he said, I, I just finished recruiting. They were the last ones they recruited. So he said, you know what I'm saying, roster spot full. He said, what I will do, he said, if you can get down here, I'll take a look at you. Mm. Um, and he said, but what I'll do is I'll talk to other coaches in the conference and say, hey, I got a player that just worked out for me. If you guys have anything for him, take a look at him. I said, bet what I need. He said, just figure out a way down here. I go, I go to my mom. I say, yo, mom. Now, now it's been two years. Mm-hmm. So it's been, it's been the year that... Uh, after I play, and then when I'm the cameraman. So uh, during this span, I'm doing everything I need to do to try to get into a school, and it just wasn't working out, right? So 
I get there. Uh, I take the train. It was probably 16 hours. Probably 16 hours. But it was really like the layover in yeah. Chicago. Chicago layover. And I got, I got an MP3 clip like this. Ain't no iPods. Well, it was an iPods, but I couldn't afford it, right? Yeah. The big <laughs> circle ones, right? Yeah. I got an MP3 clip with 20 songs on there. Same 20 songs. I'm listening to Young Dro. <laughs> <laughs> right? Totally. I li- that's all I listen to. Oh I, li- my God. I, I got Young Dro on my Sansa clip. That's <laughs> all I listen to, right? <laughs> But uh, 150 round trip, mm. 150 round trip, right? So I'm sitting here like, wow. I'm just, I'm just like, yo, this is it. I was gonna give up, cause it was like, it just, it just ain't in the cars. You feel what I'm saying? Like it just, it just ain't in the cars. So I go down there, I play. We go out to eat first. You know, they pair you with like a guy, show you the campus and stuff like that, right? So I play. You know, I'm saying, whoa. We go out to eat afterward, we go to Outback. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even telling you about just my experience, right? Like, I'm just, I'm happy to be here type stuff, right? Yeah. So we get there. He had this envelope. <clears throat> he say, uh, this is for you. He said, I know I told you that recruiting was full, but he said, after seeing you play, I can't pass up on you. My first ever, like, real scholarship. I got a scholarship at KCC, right? Shout out. But I'm like, yo, this was this was nice, you know what I'm saying? So the whole time I'm bluffing like, yeah, I got to weigh my options. Knowing the whole time I'm signing anything you put in front of me, like, here you go, dog. Like, I'm here, dog. Like, yeah. you know? So that's that's how I got to West Virginia. You know what I'm saying? So the, like I say, everywhere I went, I was blessed enough to have people that I knew. So I already knew the guys. Not that well, but I knew of them from, you know, conference play and stuff like that. So yeah. you know, we get the room in together. Like, it's cool. We all come from the same thing. We got the same experiences. So I wasn't there by myself. Out of everybody, I was the only one that finished. Out of every single person, I was the only one that finished. And that was what my presentation was, a, was yeah. you know, part of that, that, why it meant so much. They all had the same opportunities as me, you know. <clears throat> but I finished. And, and, you know, everybody's timing is different, you know what I'm saying? But it, it was just like back to that student-athlete portion, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is something that I can forever be proud of. This is something that my parents can forever be proud of, like, first generation in my household, my immediate family, with the bachelors. You know, my mom had associates, but my brother didn't finish school. You know, my, my dad didn't probably go to college like that. So for me, that was big. <clears throat> but I went through so much that I had every reason to, like, not be there, right? So after my junior year, I check in with – um academic st- I forgot what they called at the time like when like in Student universities services. it's a little bit better they yeah. actually pair you with somebody like yeah that, right but once again I'm not doing I'm learning as I'm going so when I get to to the school I asked the coach about a program it was a physical physical therapy assistant PTA right I'm like yo this is the program I want to do or I thought I wanted to do <laughs> right yeah and like, oh yeah we got that program cool bet Get my classes, you know. So after my junior year, I go follow up to to see if I'm on track. You know, I talk to the lady. She said, we don't even carry that program here. Blow, right? I'm going into my senior year, academically, I guess, or whatever, right? Like, whatever. Y'all don't even have a program. So I just wasted my whole junior year. She said, you got one or two options. She said, the track you're on, you can have a degree in business, or sports management, or transfer to another school and do three plus years. Now at this time, I'm like 20, 21, 22, probably. How does three years sound to a 22 year old that been that already going on six years or five, five, six years in school? Medical school. I ain't right. do, I ain't do <laughs> it like it's that, like, right? What? Like, what, not, what more do you want me to do? Right. So I say. Give me the the sweats yeah. degree, right? <laughs> yeah. Now the older me would have said business, mm-hmm. right? I, I took a like in the business, but mm-hmm. the younger me, I'm like sports, right? So give me the sports degree. So my senior year comes, I'm like, all right, I'm about to get out of here. You know, I'm on this track. Yeah, Corey ran into a little issue. You gotta complete this internship. You gotta da 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 da. I'm like, come on, dog. Now this ain't even on top of everything else I went, I'm going through in West Virginia. I went through some stuff. Dog. Yeah, I really went through some stuff. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, come on, man, come on, man, dog. Like, you, you killing me, yeah. right? Yeah. 
So I ended up staying another year just going to school. Same thing I did in community college. I ended up doing university. I take a whole year just go to school so I can graduate. It was the best year of my life, though. Mm. The, it was the best year of my life because I have no obligations. And I'm taking two classes a semester. I'm doing classes like marketing. I got a marketing class, did an internship with a professional baseball team. That was the one of the best experiences I've ever had. Minor, mm -hmm. it was a minor league baseball team. Like that's that's dope. Like I don't even like baseball like that, but like yeah. being watching how they practice, being in a batting cage, like you know, in the dugouts, like doing the halftime, not halftime, but timeout things we had to do. Like it was it was nice, you know. But um. Yeah, it was the it was it was the best. I only had two classes, so me I, because of how school was, you had morning classes in high school. Mm -hmm. So when I got to college, mm -hmm. I didn't get lazy. Yeah, it's another part. Like everybody different. I'm already conditioned to get up at six. I get my classes out the way. I got the rest of the day to myself. That was just my thought process. I'm not trying to go to class at two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's my day when I could be doing at the yeah. mall or something yeah. like. No, I'm done. Like I had a couple night classes. Don't get me wrong. Like, but that was the worst ever. Yeah. Six to nine. I'm I'm in up. <laughs> sociology. Sociology. A night a three hour sociology class. How you think that went? Okay, so you went from doing another year to. So at this particular point, are you thinking? Okay, am I trying to do pro or I'm just trying to get out of school? Because you say that your, your last year was your best year, yeah. but you were focused on just being a student. So yeah. where does does athlete ever come back into the picture? So athlete actually, so once again, right, this is how I come back into the picture. When I graduated, I came back home. <clears throat> I got a letter in the mail. It was to an exposure camp in um, Cali. Right. They they had my stats, everything. Right. Like, hey, you come to exposure camp. Mm -hmm. This is how they, you know, I guess try to get you. Everybody, everybody's situation different. Right? I don't really know how everybody works. I can only tell you my, my how my thing went. Right. They say we'll cover everything. You just got to cover uh, flight. Like, I don't know if it's like hotel or food or something like that. Right. But it, like whatever. Right. All I'm hearing is money. Yeah. So once again, here we go. Hey, ma. <laughs> I got this uh, little exposure thing, you know. It's, it's over with. I'm fresh out of college. I'm broke. I get a letter saying student loan payment three hundred something dollars. Yo, it's a, I've been out of college a month, and y'all sending me a three hundred something dollar student loan? Nah, we ain't doing that, you know. But um, so I never end up going. So around this time, I'm like, okay, I got a degree. How can I try to work it? Yeah. This when I started working at the YMCA. Uh, I also was working at Best Buy, but I'm working at the Y um, as a youth specialist. You know, I'm really working with kids in the gym, doing programs with them. Didn't really have guidance. They just threw you in a fire, you know. Um, plus, Figure they it was, out. plus they was uh, had a, like a little transition, <clears throat> and things like that. It wasn't going well. I knew I was gonna get let go. It just wasn't going. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't going well, right? That was my first time meeting JP too. JP. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm like, look at this guy, man. Who's, who's this guy, right? Yeah. But um, shout out JP. <laughs> but that's how I got to the Y. But on my downtime, I'm playing ball. So you know, I'm playing recreationally. I don't I ain't really no leagues like that. But I think it was like one league, right, or whatever. Dominating. Right, like I'm fresh. I got college legs, right? Yeah, I'm in college, I'm in college shape. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. you know, like so. The guy who actually got me to play, try to play ball, because mentally I was just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this degree, right? Was a uh, Galladay. Uh, they call him Bug James Galladay. I think I think it's James Galladay. Okay, dark, dark, you know, dark skin guy, ball head, uh, real cool. So we used to play a refresher phone all the time. He's like, man, Nelly, man, he was like. He said, I don't know why you ain't trying to do nothing, man. He said, he said, it's too easy for you. He said, man, go out. He said, you know, just do it for me. I said, bet I'll do it. So I contacted uh, the owner at the time, you know, like, uh, hey, you know, I just want to come to your practice and do, do what we do. He like, bet I'll take a look at you. So I get to the practice. I do what I do. 
and he was like, you're on the team. Now, it's like 10 games, nine games left in the season. So mm-hmm. I, come, I come like at the tail end of the season. And this is my first pro experience. So it's completely different from college, right? These, these people, because cause one, even though it's pro, these people are trying to get to the next level. Okay. So, and then you got some people who, when they get injured, it's like a pit stop for them, like a part of their rehabilitation process, right? Mm-hmm. So then the coach, he he was kind of like a agent. So he doing like multiple things. So he playing the people who he, because you know, you get paid and stuff like that, right? So like, this is my first time seeing politics in basketball. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't even about winning. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like politics. I was a part of a great team. Like, they, they was a really good team I was a part of. But they was getting they butt beat. <laughs> Yeah, it was getting beat. Yeah, you know? like yo, y'all, y'all put this together, you know. Um, so that's how I got playing. So then I'm like, all right. After the season, after the season over, I said I'm gonna really get my body in shape because I was working a job, right? And on top of other personal things. So I started training twice a day, right? I'm back running, back playing in the gym, uh, you know, just being competitive. And then I get into a league. So I'm still working at the Waddle. Guy called me one day like, yo, Nils, we need you. We got four people. Uh, I'm like, man, I don't care. Like, I'm not trying to play. Like, you know, <laughs> man, come on. You saw, you know, this is how they make yeah, you. Yeah. You saw, you yeah. da, da, da. Like, Here we go, man. All right. They even had another person call me, right? So I get there. Now, I start, you know, I started playing. You know, we doing our thing. And out of nowhere, that's when I hear fall so i'm look like when i fall i look i look at the ref i look at i look at the ref like you ain't call no foul he said bro ain't nobody touch you i said yeah it's over with i said i already knew what it was i said it's over with that's when i uh, rushed my achilles tendon so as i was preparing for my first season to try to play uh for the lake michigan admirals i tell my achilles now i've always struggled with my weight things like that i never was really athletic never was fast so um, me tearing my Achilles was a big setback for me. Mm-hmm. So people who don't know, if you don't know, like that's one of the worst basketball injuries you can have. Like it's the toughest to come back from. Like a lot of people have not came back from that injury. Um, a few people have. You know, Kevin Durant is like one of the elite people that I've seen come back from one. Clay Thompson is still struggling a little bit. He had a Achilles, but he also tore his ACL, mm-hmm. right? But let's let's go back to this. They're professional athletes, so they're rehabbing how many times a day? Right. They got a whole team. Right. But, yeah. And it still may take them eight months. Yeah. Right? So they're rehabbing two, three times a day, proper nutrition, swimming, uh, yo, whatever they got to do. Yeah. I still have to work a job. Right? So, now, mm. now let's go back to, I knew I was going to rush my Achilles. So the whole time I was playing basketball, I had these tingling sensations in the back of my legs. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how we got there, right? Um, so my guy Chuck from <laughs> <laughs> from Chicago, he had the he had these strength shoes. So it's shoes that you can walk around on your tippy toes all day, right? Strength shoes, right? <laughs> now he wear a ten and a half. I wear a ten. I wanted hops, right? I wanted I wanted to dunk, right? So. When he left, he left his shoes. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm about to get some hops. So, you know, I started working around. I started working out in the strength shoes, right? So my Achilles started feeling funny. I'm like, oh, I don't really know what's going on, right? So I put him down. I don't touch no one. Mm-hmm. So that was my first year of college. So as I go to West Virginia, I'm like, all right, I'm about to get back on the you strength You still shoes. have them? No, I gave him to Justin Webb. I gave it to my guy. I gave it to my guy, Justin. No, but you carried them from yeah. school to school. Yeah. Carried, I carried them from school to school, right? I just didn't use them because my Achilles was hurting, but I didn't know what it was. So when I get when I go to West Virginia, I use them again, right? I'm like, all right, I'm about to get back on them. I'm like, yo, this is some excruciating pain. Like, I don't know what this is. Hmm. So I'm like, by this time, I'm getting, I'm getting smarter, right? I did some dumb stuff, but I'm getting smarter. So I go on Google. They say, if you experience any type of sensation, like whatever, put them down immediately. So you mean tell me, <laughs> my freshman year of college, I've been playing with 
I don't know what it is, right? I ain't gonna say that it was partially torn. I ain't gonna say nothing, right? But it was like literally a sensation. Like, like it's not a good feeling. So I'm walking around with these sensations in the back of my, my, my feet, playing basketball the whole time. So my senior year, uh, at this time, I can't take it no more, right? So I'm kind of giving you the backstory to when I uh, tore my Achilles, right? Mm-hmm. I give you the backstory. I said, God, I said, I don't know what this is. I said, but whatever it is, I said, please let me finish my collegiate career. Mm. I said, I do not want to get injured because it could be over. You know what I'm saying? You, you lose, you probably could lose your scholarship. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah, it's, all a, of that. it's a yeah. lot of things that can happen when you get injured, right? So yeah. I, I said a prayer. I said, I said, I just want to heal. I said, I just want to be normal. I just want to walk normal again, right? But let me finish my collegiate career. So I knew that these puppies was messed up, right? So I finished. Once again, I finished. I graduate. I do all this stuff. So when I brush my Achilles, I knew what I knew what it was, mm. right? I'm upset because I'm trying to do this thing, but I'm also grateful because I asked for this. There was a very specific prayer. I asked for this. Yeah. I said I want to be healed, mm-hmm. right? So that was in 2014. So once again, it took me like two years to bounce back, right? So. It's like 2016. I'm starting to feel good again, right? I'm like, oh, okay. It took me like two years. I'm like, I'm feeling good, right? I gained weight. I shot up to two. I shot up to like 230. I think I met you that summer. Probably. Yeah, I think I did. I, I shot up to like summer. 230. That was my heaviest. I was like 230. Now, my plan weight has always been 185. So I shot up to like 230. So then, um, so those two years, I'm trying to get weight down. I'm like, yo, I'm big, right? You know, I'm like, Mom's feeding me, girlfriend feeding me. I'm laying down in the boot watching Walking Dead all day. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing nothing. So then um, I finally get good. I'm, I'm playing in tournaments. I'm like, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. So I'm about to get ready and do my thing again, right? So <clears throat> 2018, I tell the right one. Yeah. Boy, do I remember that. Yeah, that's when you really remember yeah. that. I'm around on the I scooter. Yeah, like, I, I, scooter. I'm, like on, I'm like on that, right? Yeah. So I was in Grand Rapids when I tore that one. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that, that that was like a four-year gap, right? But it's it's a it's a emotional and mental battle. Mm-hmm. More like physical is, ah, uh, it'll take care of itself, you know? But it, it was like going into a dark place, right? Like... I don't think I ever suffered depression or know what depression is, but you alone. When basketball is all you had, all you knew, and it got taken away from you, you like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. But thank God, my plan B, <laughs> I, 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 I pray for this, right? I, I got my plans in place, right? Mm-hmm. Like things like that. So when it happened, I'm not too much in a funk because I'm glad that it happened, right? Like now I got to be better in other ways. So. When 2018 happened, I'm like, all right, cool. Last one, I'm done, right? Like, no more injuries, bro. I'm good. I can walk again, right? So, like, uh, that took me another two years or so to kind of get back into a groove again, right? And I'm just doing it for the love at this point, right? Like, I just love the sport. Pandemic hit. 2020. Shut down, right? So, once again. Oh, yeah, because you were really working. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Pandemic hit, right? Yeah. I'm eating food. You know, it's pandemic, right? Like, so I was talking to a couple guys. I'm like, yo, I just started feeling good probably like a year ago. So think from 2016. That's a two-year mark, though. Like, just think, 2016 and 2018, then 2020? No, but I, I, told, I told my kids in 2014. Okay. So that was a four-year gap. But what I'm saying is from <clears throat> I had gained a lot of I had started – it takes like two years for you to start your body, your mind yeah. to really start feeling good, right? So when I say two years, it's for me to like, oh, I feel good to really. Well, feel- now I'm saying in my mind, I was thinking like, wow, these changes was happening. Oh, yeah. every two years, yeah, yeah. yeah. it kind of it kind of was like every two years, it kind of yeah. like every two years for me. <clears throat> so when I did that, like pandemic, I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. And that's on top of everything that's going on with work, right? Like on top of everything. Right. Yeah. So then, you know, when I get back to where I'm at now, I'm like, yo, I'm just a- at a point to where, like, I feel good. I get, I get some more news. I got to have right knee surgery. I got torn bone, torn bone and cartilage floating in my knee. So it randomly blocks 
uh, when I'm like walking, it'll lock up a little bit depending on what's in there. It'll swell up. I can't like you know. Um, it's a it's an outpatient surgery, so it probably take like an hour or something like that, you know. But it's still surgery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, yeah. right? It's still rehab at the end of the day. Yeah. So and the th- thing is, I had been feeling this. What I've been feeling in my knee, I had always been feeling when I was playing basketball for college. So you you mean to tell me I'm playing with two potentially messed up legs and torn something in my knee and yeah. still producing at a high level? I try to tell Cash like. Y'all don't know what y'all ain't really face adversity. Y'all ain't really face adversity. So to come back, mm-hmm. to wrap it up, you know, I know we went a lot of places and, and got off of kind of like the student athlete. I didn't right? learn so much. So yeah. But coming back, I said I wanted to give back to the community. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So <clears throat> seeing what the kids was doing and not taking it seriously, being baby, being coddled. It's like they're not preparing you for mm-hmm. the real world. Nobody's going to hold your hand in college. So when when those athletes, and I'm speaking basketball, right? You know, mm-hmm. I don't, you know, that's just my space. So when those athletes reach back out to me, I'm there to support them. But I'm saying, hey, that's what guys like me is for. Mm-hmm. I've been through it. I can tell you how to navigate, you know, how to be prepared and things like that. But when everybody else is... If if I'm the only person that's speaking up and challenging this behavior, who am I? I don't have a big name. Like, you know, what Corey? Corey really went nowhere big. Who is he? Like, you know, yeah. like things like that. But I'm saying, y'all, I, I done been through some stuff and I got through everything I've ever been through, right? So to see that, it's like what could have happened, what what could have been for, for the for the youth, right? Like, we have to build a pipeline of athletes that went to school. Mm. You don't even necessarily got to graduate. Like, everybody don't have to graduate, but, like, you know, that, that say this is what it takes. This is what I had to learn. Um, these are some of the challenges, right, mm-hmm. the setbacks. This is how you be successful. Take your butt to study hall, right? Ask for extra credit. Ask for extra credit. Mm-hmm. Cut, cut back on the partying, right? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a time to, it's a time and a place for all that. Right, I tell I, I used to, I tell Cass I said I was a recreational person, so when I when I indulged in things, I, it was only for one night mm-hmm. or something like that, right? Like I'm not a habitual anything when it came to that, because I knew this basketball took me places I never thought I'd even see. I ain't even got to play the sport. The basketball took me to West Virginia. Now that I'm in West Virginia, I got to see North Carolina, mm-hmm. my first HBCU. Uh, mm-hmm. North Carolina A and T. Now, why you do that? Why you bring up A and T? That was the first one I experienced, man. Eagle Pride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got I got to see that the the black experience, mm-hmm. dog. and that's that's what made me want to move to North Carolina. Um, I've been to Greensboro, you know, uh, Winston Salem. I got to see that. I ain't been on the uh, east east side of the state, so I ain't get to see Riley. And you know, I've been to Charlotte. Right, that's Charlotte, right? Yeah. But um, t- I'm in Tennessee. You know, all, I'm in southern West Virginia. I'm in southern West Virginia, right on the border. So, yeah, because I even wondered. I said, the only thing I know that's in West Virginia is Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> and I think Steve Harvey is from there, which blew my mind. I was no, like, I he's from West that. Virginia. I'm pretty sure. Don't make me pull out my phone. It went off. But, yes, I think he's from West Virginia. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, know I didn't know that. So, I got to I got to go to Tennessee. It's right on the border. I it's got, right there. I, I yeah. I got to go to Virginia. Oh, I love Virginia. It's Virginia State. I got to see that. Oh, That's yeah. my other yeah. HGC I get to see. I'm like, yo, this stuff. I, once again, I'm learning these things. I'm a young adult at this time, right? People can tell. They can tell you all they want. But you got to. See I got to see it. I didn't know nothing about. It. So even a black college tour, I'm going to stuff that I never. I'm never going to go to these schools. I didn't. I'm not going to Morehouse. Mm. It's cool, but I'm not mm-hmm. going to Morehouse, mm-hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? And then uh, my best friend, he was trying to get me to go to Claflin University in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. You know, because he was down there. He's like, man, yeah. Bills, I need you to come, bro. Like, come on. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know, bro. Like, I was trying to do this basketball thing. Like, me, like, man, you could play, yeah. dog. But um, it took me a lot of places, and I'm thankful for that. I got to see a lot of things because of the ball, right? But I wouldn't have even got to see that if I didn't do what I needed to do in the school as a person the ball would have got cut short and then i wouldn't even seen all those things 
you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I always carried that with me in anything that I do. I'm, if this is my bread and butter, I'm not going to let anything cut into my bread and butter. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. So if I got to cut friends off, I got to cut friends off. If I got to cut girls off, I got to cut girls off, right? All of that was an afterthought. School, ball was number one, but school was kind of like, it's like 1A and 1B. Yeah. <laughs> ball was 1A, yeah. school was like 1B. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I never let it, it, anything get in the way of ball. So if school is a part of that, well, I got to take care of school, you know? And that's just, everybody don't have that mentality because they thinking ball. They thinking like, somebody's going to come save me. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to do it. Hey, if you ain't a, a D1 athlete, because I wasn't a D1 athlete. D1 athletes do get treated, you know, whatever. They ain't coming to save you. No, and then be honest, if you're a D1 and any slip up, they'll be like, we don't know you. Yeah. Unless, yeah. You, unless you like Derrick Rose or something. Like, <laughs> unless you like a guaranteed NBA lottery pick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like those, yeah. when I say D1, I'm talking about like those players. Like a like, LeBron or somebody. Yeah, yeah like somebody you know, day. like, yeah, they, they the real deal, you know. Yeah. But um, when you at these smaller schools and things like that, you, you see how real it get. And you see who's really there for you and care for you when you fall down. So the same people that was letting you get away with all of these things aren't the same people that's picking you up and, and, and helping you get into these 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 schools, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I've even had conversation to say, okay, you want to go to this school? Why you want to go to this school? What does the school have for you? Why are you agreeing to this? Because somebody tell you to go mm-hmm. there? Because your friend's going? Yeah. Like, nah, you got to make a decision that's best for you. And your family or whatever situation that you're in, don't go because somebody tell you to go and it's a good reference for them and things like that. Like, no, nah, you got to do your due diligence. Is this going to make you happy? How mm-hmm. far are you willing to travel? Mm-hmm. Right? Because when you get in the mud, can you call that same person? Or are they on to the next person? You know? Um, but like I say, it, it's, it happens. And mm-hmm. it's, I don't want to say disheartening. But it's so much, ta- it's so many talented cats that was way talented than me. Yeah. That didn't go and do what I knew that they were capable of doing and being and becoming in a, from a sports realm, right? Now, I always say life is different. Life will always take us. We got our different paths and we make our own decisions. But if I ask you, do you love basketball or football or whatever, and you say, yeah, then why are you doing that? If that's going to take away from this, why are you doing it? You don't love it then. Mm-hmm. You love what comes with it. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody, you're an athlete. Everybody like you. You're the athlete. You know, you get the perks and, you yeah. know, things like that. Right? you the fly guy, whatever the case may be. Yeah, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? But if you really love this, you got to talk about the ugly stuff, too. The isolation that comes with it, mm-hmm. right? The, yeah. dis- the discipline, the yeah. sacrifice. Um, I know Wilson talked a little bit about that when he came to the club, I think the first time mm-hmm. he talked about that, which I was like, that's good. And I'm really glad that yeah. we even talked about this today. So, yeah, it's it's a lot that yeah. goes into it. Yeah. It's a lot that you're committing to. Right. Yeah. Right, right. And, and once again, my injury happened after college. What if you get injured in college? Then, then what? Yeah. Right? Like that's what that's where that, that whole planning, you gotta you gotta plan your life out. You gotta start, you gotta take something serious. Mine was a little rougher because the way my parents was, they said, Corey, what do you wanna be? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I wasn't exposed to anything, right? Like like I, I always say my brother had a gift. He he knew what he could do and be, whatever, like it wasn't like that for me. But I always knew I had a passion for people. So I knew I wanted to do purpose work when I um, came back. So the club was actually the first place that um, I applied for. Mm. I got denied, which is why I started working in other places. Yeah. So with me still working uh, um, there, I work because I want to make an impact. It, it's All the other stuff that comes with it, I'm not there for that. I'm there because how can I help? You know what I'm saying? This person get to the next level. Or how can I share my experiences that they can learn from, right? Yes, you're going to make your own decisions. But if I've already been through something, right? If I've lived longer than you, mm-hmm. right? It's all yeah. I said, right? <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I've lived longer yeah. than you, right? I've been where you're trying to go. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you listen to what I got to say? That's, that's ignorance. That's, that's, that's ignorance, 
right? And the penalty for ignorance is the things that you go through when mm-hmm. you don't take heed to it, right? So once again, if I can learn from you, if I can learn from Miss RJ, and you, she tell me, yo, I've been through this, yo, I'm, I'm planting that seed. Like, if you, you go rob a store, <laughs> right? <laughs> I see Buddy get killed. Yeah. You think I robbed the same store? No, nah, I know I know what's sitting behind the register. <laughs> yeah. But you got some people that take that risk. No, nah, I got this type of with yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we gonna do it this way. Yeah. All right. But that's still the risk that this could happen. But why, why even put yourself in that situation? My dad always told me, he, my dad gave me like the greatest life, greatest life advice. Though. I like I had a lot of quotables, man. Right. He used to say, he said, he said, Corey, he said, uh, if I got to go to a, to a situation where I got to feel like I got to have a gun or feel harm or feel like something, I don't need to be there, right? So once again, with a lot of violence and things that we, we have in the city, mm-hmm. we got people going into places knowing that people I don't like is going to be there, but it's an ego thing, right? What you going to do about it if I'm here? I'm here to do something, right? So you're willing to take the risk of taking somebody else's life, your life getting took or whatever the case may be off of ego. Nah, your number one thing is to make it home. Your number one thing is to, 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 to take care of yourself first. I'm not even putting myself in that situation because I got mom, I got moms over here. I got yeah. grandma over here. I got family over here. People Siblings. that actually love you. Yeah. There's people that actually love you that is, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, both families lose. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, it's no ego. You can have that. I'm going to go this way. I'm straight. It's a time and place for everything because now I mess up your good time. Innocent bystanders get hit, killed, things like that. It's, it's, it's ignorance at the end of the day. And nobody's – I was watching this thing the other day, and we taking a full turn, right? I was about to say, I'm about to stop you. <laughs> We're going to stop. We're going to stop. We're going to stop. We're going to stop, right? We're going to stop because now we're talking about – but this is real stuff, This right? is what's going on in our city, yeah. So I, I was watching this thing the other day. And this guy, he said, we don't have what's called a code of conduct, right? He said, every other culture, they have a code of conduct, right? He said, but we don't. Where hmm. we all can agree on something, right? Let's, let's use, because uh, they always say, oh, back in the day, we used to have a sense of community. We used to have this and this and that. We had a code of conduct. I could tell you, you I can tell you your kid was wrong and you wouldn't curse me out, right? You will at least talk to your kid first. Try to get down to the bottom of it or say, hey, you know, you're, even if this person did something, you're still supposed to show this person respect, right? Mm-hmm. But now we got the thing where adults don't respect kids and stuff like that. I get all that. I understand, right? Mm-hmm. I, I definitely understand that. But I'm saying I can't even correct your child and say, yo, man, you know you're not supposed to be doing that without a parent say, oh, you can't say nothing to my kid. Mm-hmm. There's no code of conduct. So then I'm also thinking about when you're helping these young people, it's like, let me be let me be the guide you're trusting me let me be the guide yeah. and not having that oh man that's even thinking about with games when you all be like uh let me handle this mm-hmm. okay all right yeah and like everything's so delicate now if, I, if i'm trying to teach a kid some skills and they're not getting these skills at home i'm contradicting their their home environment Mm-hmm. So now there's going to be pushback. Kids probably going to be conflicted. Yo, I'm coming. I'm getting, you know, I'm having these conversations. I'm doing this. But when I go home, it's the total opposite. What you want them to do? Right? I think that, well, the parent going to look at that like, they don't raise you. I raise you. Right? This is how you react in situations. Somebody hit you, hit them back and stuff like that. Woo, 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 right? Like, I'm just giving that, you know, that's a broad example. So how does this add into the bigger picture? Because I heard you say before that you wanted to do something around, because now I'm throwing it back on you, something around collaborating with former student athletes to help young people become student athletes or be aware of what it is. Like, So we we don't have a true pipeline. Yeah. Right? So right now... It's missing a gap. Mm-hmm. So even from the younger generation to the older generation, mm-hmm. let's say around, even though you're, you know, we're supposed to be that bridge, right? Mm-hmm. There's no bridge. Yeah. So even with student athletes, there's no bridge from the cats who are in school, the cats who are in college, and some of the cats who are playing professionally. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. Because the professional perspective can give you something different. Yeah. And now it's not more so student athlete. It's more so character, mm -hmm, right, at mm, this point, right? Mm -hmm. But that still plays a part. The guys who are in college, they're trying to get to the pro level. So the pro guys can give to the, the guys in college what it takes to get to the pro and things like that you have to do to prepare for. Yeah. The guys in college can give back to the guys that's trying to get to college. And there's a variety because a, a two-year is different than a four-year. Right. Right? A uh, mid-major is different than a Michigan State. Right. So so there's there's a variety of, of, of things. But the main component of student athlete is character. At the end of the day, how do you carry yourself? Are you respectful? Right. Like, are you like, do you know when to walk away from a situation? Things a like fight, that. Right. Anything. Yeah. All of us ain't the best academically inclined people. I already know that. Right. I'm, I'm a you're I am a C average student. <laughs> Two point whatever, mm -hmm. five, seven, that's me. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> so you don't have to, when I when we talk about student, we're not talking about getting straight A's. Yeah. It's the other stuff that come with it too. The discipline that comes with it. Going to study hall. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. doing the right thing. Helping your teammate out. And when you're seeing them in a bad situation. Now nah, we got we got bigger things to do. Uh, uh, partaking in uh, school events, community events, right? Community like, service. Yeah. Yeah. Commun community service. Yeah. Doing, doing things like that. So now you're immersing yourself around things that isn't really your typically your norm, but you get to learn new skills. People are afraid to get out of their comfort zone. I always love learning. I'm an advocate for learning, right? When you stop learning, you stop growing. Mm -hmm. Note that, right? <laughs> 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 when, you, when you stop learning, you stop growing. So... All of, the, all of those things when you're a student is how can I get better, right? In every aspect, how can I be on time, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's part of it. It's showing up. How can I be on time? But I also, we can't forget home situation do matter. And we're not saying that. Everybody comes from different, right? Mm -hmm. Some people may stay up at night and got nothing to eat, ain't getting the best sleep and stuff like that. But you got to open your mouth, right? You got to let somebody know and try to get help. And that, and that could be tough because we're taught to, you're going to judge me. Or what happens in the house stays in or the house. Or what happens in the house stays in the house, right? Yeah. You, you're going to judge me, so I, I got to drown, right? And that and that's the things that you don't get as a child. When you become an adult, you still deal with those things. So you can't run from it. You can't escape it. They just cope with it, or you just cope with it, right? So I vowed to put into myself and my situations the same way I pour into these kids. Mm -hmm. I can't tell these kids that if something's bothering them, they need to let me know. And then I don't let nobody know when something's bothering me. Right. Do yeah. I have a, do I have a safe emotional space where I can come and say, Hey, this is how I'm feeling. I'm dealing with these emotions. I don't know what to do. Right. We, we all need that as human. That's a basic human need that, emotional factor where we deal with things or go through things that shapes us and makes us who we are right you are who you are today because of your experiences mm -hmm. yes i am who i am because of my experiences mm -hmm. right yes we may react differently to those if we experience the same thing we may react differently but if you have a, a rougher experience you're going to be more closed than a person who has a joyful experience, right? Where, you know, a person tell you I love you every day, right? And I'm, you know, not to get too personal, but that's something that wasn't said a lot in my household, right? So you feel it, you know it's there, but when you witness it or you see something else, you question it like, dang, what's, you know, but everybody expressed differently. I don't know what my peoples went through. I can't judge them for that. As I got older, I'm learning more about them from an adult standpoint. They're telling me things. I'm like, yo, I see and I understand now. Because right? of experience. Because of, of experiences. Mm. Some people show love differently, right? Some people want some people want verbal affection. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? But we all got to understand that we're different and what our needs are and cater to those needs. they actually pour into ourselves. So a lot of this stuff that happens is... Our emotions get the best of us. So even for our young kids, they're not emotionally mature. But you have adults who's not emotionally mature neither. So you got adults who 
are giving kids advice who haven't dealt with their own things, right? It confuses the heck out of these kids. <laughs> and then we're not, now we're throwing in social media, right? <laughs> social media is there. I can go I and see. I love social media. I, I dislike it. Don't start. I like it. Okay, I do like it. Okay. All right. Corey. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> I talk too much. No, I was like, it, there was no need for me to say final thought because you wrapped it up in there, like in a nice, pretty bow. Corey. Thank you. No, nah, thank you, man. Like, I'm like, what do I, because. I honestly want you to come back another time yeah. and like do more because, you know, we used to just kind of go off on a tangent in at work. And yeah. then we look up, it's like, oh, kids are here. Yay. Um, but no, thank you. Because just as you were talking, it was so many things that were just like, that was eye opening. Oh, wait. OK, light bulb. Yep. That. Yeah. And there was also things that. I feel like maybe we touched on, but you didn't really do a deep dive into it. So right. just to see that time or to hear the timeline of what it before, yeah. during, and then after, and then just because I've been able to witness Corey's um, gifts and giving back to young people and training with them and just seeing a difference. So I just don't want him to lose that spark. Um, clearly, he's very gifted. Um, it's sometimes it's like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm really hoping that this episode more than anything for our student athletes, and that is all sports that, you know, yeah, like that's, that's Corey's experience of with basketball, but this goes for softball, volleyball, basketball, volleyball, I, I said yeah. volleyball, football, <laughs> uh, soccer, baseball, just all of them. All of the sports, like it's still before anything, you are a student athlete. So, Corey, just thank you because I've, again, I've witnessed him even pull young people to the side and just have a conversation with them about, like, man, what are you doing? So, thank you. Just yeah, don't man. give up. And then, lastly, just uh, I want to thank you as well. And just to give you guys a little insight, like, I'm a very transparent person, mm -hmm. right? So, it's things that I share about myself that the average person wouldn't share. Yeah. Once again, but that's just me being in tune with who I am. And I feel like kids need to hear that and see that. Now, I'm not giving you, obviously, right. personal, personal. <laughs> right. per like, I'm not giving you the wild yeah, night. You know, yeah. I'm not giving you that. But yeah. I'm, I'm letting you know that, hey, I've been through this. This was my experience. This is what happened to me, right? Yeah. You know, yes, I've been, uh, yes, I've, you know, like I say, recreation. Yes, I've done things before. Yes, I've got into it with the law before. Yes, I've gotten speeding tickets before. Like, yeah. come on, like I'm not gonna yeah. sit here and act like I'm this <laughs> yeah. perfect, this perfect being. So I feel like when you're able to be that transparent with people, not just kids, but with people, they respect you more because they like it's authentic. Yeah, you know, it's really authentic. Now, Absolutely. And the pushback, the pushback just comes from. Once again, we don't have no code of conduct. So if you got a guy that's saying something that everybody else ain't saying, it's foreign to you. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's, it's yeah. Foreign. Yo, this yeah. is weird, bro. Like, so yeah. just just thank you, man. Like I said, we, we can wrap up. And, you know, my ultimate goal, dream, you know, my dream goal was to uh, have my own training facility, right? Now, you got a lot of people that's training in the a, in a city. But to me, that's a tool. Basketball is always a tool to get you. Once again, that, that was my college Basketball is just a tool. So with training, what else are they getting outside of this? Right? I want y'all to be better young men. I want y'all to be better young women. I want y'all to be better people. Yeah. Right? I want y'all to go be great. Right? Like have successful families and, you know, it's okay to work a regular nine to five and like yeah. don't be out here. What supports do you need? Like it's other avenues out here that can, um, for you to be successful. Because if you ask a young person, what does success look like? You'll be surprised at the answers that you get. I know. And on that, yeah, we're going to wrap up this episode of the Please Do Tell podcast with your homegirl, Ronika. And you got to hear from Corey. <laughs> Corey. Corey. Um, I outdid King of King. <laughs> I outdid it. That was my goal today. That was my goal today. Oh, today. Keena, he's coming for you. 
All right, y'all. We'll see you next time on the Please Do Tell podcast. Thanks again to Corey, and we will see you next.